Week 10, problem two. Ocean waves with crest to crest distance of 10 meters can be described by the wave function. And then they give us a wave function, okay? Where x and y are in meters, t is in seconds, and v is 1.2 meters per second. Okay, so looking at this guy real quick, get some blue out here, oh, blue. All right, so where am I? There we go. So this, so you're gonna have a wave, I'm gonna say it looks like this. Kinda like a sine wave. Um, mm, I'm gonna do a better sine wave than that. So, there we go. That's an almost reasonable sine wave. This will be zero. There we go, zero. So what it's saying is 0 0.8, so the wave is 0.8 meters high, crest to crest, so if this continues on like this, then the crest to crest right here would be 10 meters. And that's gonna be the wavelength. So I could also say from this point to this point, from any two identical points will be 10 meters. Um, this, talk about this guy in a second, this guy is two pi over lambda, where lambda is the wavelength. X is the, um, the X position and t is the time. So this is a um, function of two variables. So you're probably used to seeing like y of x equals something sine of x. Or you're gonna say y equals sine of x. The idea is you put in an x and you, for any, if you ever wanna find out what the y is, i.e. the height here, you can put in what the x value is and it'll tell you. Well, and the nice thing about that is, is you don't have to know, um, an infinite number of x values and pair it with an, x, an infinite number of y values like to memorize it. All you have to do is memorize y equals x sine of x and that gives you an infinite possibility of how many uh, or an infinite number of how many y values there are. So you don't have to memorize what the y values are. It's like, hey, here's a magic formula. You have an infinite number of uh, y values that just tells you by putting in the x value. I know that sounds overly complicated and philosophical. You'll get over it. Anyway, the idea here is with two, with two variables, you have an x and a t. Not only can you put in an infinite number of x's and get you know infinite number of points for y, but you can put in an infinite number of t's as well. So you have like an infinite number of infinite graphs. So you get a, you actually have a whole lot of information here. And the way this is represented then is this wave then moves um, along. So it's moving at a velocity of v. And you have a, you know, basically on time t, basically the longer it moves, um, the further along it's going to be. So distance equals velocity divided by time. Is that true? I'm going to do that differently. Velocity equals distance over time, miles per hour. Therefore, distance equals, ah, I was totally wrong, totally wrong. Distance is velocity times time. So it's just another distance, which makes sense because we're, you're, you have to have the same units to um, compare these two, to compare. You can only compare distance to distance, like the whole apples to apples thing. All right, so now we're good with that. And I'm gonna assume we're good with that. We're gonna move on. So, at least I'm gonna start answering the question. Where X and Y are in meters, T is in seconds, and velocity is 1.2 meters per second. So, okay. Sketch Y of X of T at T equals zero. All right, so before how I said we had like an infinite number of uh, X, um, functions basically. So by having two variables, we had an infinite squared number of functions as opposed to you know a normal infinite number of functions where you just had x. So I'm going to rewrite this function in terms of just x because they already told us what t is. So we don't have to have it as t anymore. We can actually make it a real number, i.e., zero. So y of x equals 0 0.8 sine of I'm going to call that. 2 pi over 10, because I can look at that and be like, oh yeah, that's 2 pi over 10. 2 pi over 10 times x. Okay? So, they're going to say, want us to sketch it. And the reason I left the vt off is because v, which is velocity, times 0, is just going to be 0. So this is the equation we have. Um, so, I'm just going to sketch something up here. All right, 
So this right here is 2 pi over lambda. That's just a conversion factor to convert the linear, um, basically x is linear because it's the linear position, and velocity is linear velocity as opposed to angular velocity. Um, so what it does is it multiplies by 2 pi, which is the circumference of a uh, number of radians in a circle, divided by 10, which in case this case is one wavelength. So it's kind of like one, um, I guess, this distance right here. So this is kind of like traveling um, 2 pi distance, but it's also 10 meters. So it's just converting between angular and blood. Just remember, this number right here is 2 pi over lambda. Bam, remember, memorize. So this guy here is going to be 10 meters. This guy here, 0 0.8. That's pretty much all you need for that sketch. Um, it's going to start at 0. I'm going to plug in just some random number. Not random. It's convenient. For x equals 0. So x equals 0, I have, um, let's see here. 0 times 2 pi over 10, we get sine of 0, which should be 0. Bam, so that's true. That point's true. I'm also going to check our point over here. When I plug in 10 meters, I should also get 0. So 10, 10 times 10 divided by 10 is 1. Sine of 2 pi is 0, so it should also be 0. Check. That seems reasonable. All right? Now, just because my, even though I have limitless faith, faith in myself, I'm still going to Wolfram this guy just to be sure. 0 0.8 times sine of x. Uh, sine of 2 pi divided by 10 times x. There we go. Now when you sketch this, it'd probably look a little sketchy if you just did a print screen and get it, put it into paste. So I wouldn't recommend that. But it'd probably work. Ah, why are you not showing me true? Why did I... Oh. <laughs> 0.8. 0 divided by 8 is in fact 0. <laughs> Bam! There we go. There, because 10. Looks about like what we made. Got it. So I'm going to say what we did was true. So that's how I would sketch it. Or we sketch it like that. But they probably want you to use like a paint program. Paint, save, upload image. Meh, don't care. Alright. Now we're going to say it when t equals 2 seconds. So again, I'm going to start by writing out our equation y of x, we just have x this time because we already know what t is sine of oh, nope 2 pi over 10 times x minus vt so v is 1.2, 1.2 times 2 is 2.4 so it's going to be 2.4 meters alright so what's going to happen then is this is going to move it 2.4 meters to the right. So same sine wave, except now this is at 2.4 meters, and this is zero. And then you can continue it back this way. Hmm. I'm going to look at Wolfram and see exactly where it intercepts. <clears throat> so the idea here um, is this moves it to the right. One way to think of that is we want to look at how the zero changes. So we know that, so we're going to set this equal to zero because we know we're looking at the zeros. So we have 0 0.8 sine of 2 pi over 10 x minus 2.4 equals zero. Well, I'll divide both sides by zero. 0 divided by 0 0.8 still 0, so that's just gone. Um, the sine of, <clears throat> the arc sine of 0 is 0. So basically when you take the sine of 0, you get 0. It's also true for pi, 2 pi, plus, plus n pi. So we know that for this part to be true, the interior part has to be 0. So we still have 2 pi over 10, x minus 2.4 equals 0. Divide by 2 pi, multiply by 10, we get x minus 2.4 equals 0 and then solving for x we're going to get x equals 2.4 so it's going to say that so basically what happened was that just moved the start point 2.4 to the right so this minus in here 
shows you that it's going to move to the right. Normally you see the minus, you think left, but this is the same idea, exact same idea, as if you were solving a, what is it, binomial? I think it's binomial. It's like, oh, x equals 2 or 3, or 3 or 2. Is that minus is naturally going to be there. And that's a result of when you solve it for a point, the point's going to be shifted to the right. Okay? And then, so, I probably should wolfram this just to make sure I'm not completely crazy. I'm not leading you too far astray, as I tend to do from time to time. Come on, Wolfram, it's not that complicated. Just graph it. Hmm. Really? Computational time exceeded? It's not that tough. Not that tough. Kick it up a notch, Wolfram. Man, you are having a real trouble here, Wolfram. Hmm. Maybe the internet's dying or something. No? I don't know. I'm right. Probably should check it anyway. I would. How how has the wave moved between graph A and B? Okay. Well, either I'm completely wrong, or I was right before, and I'm going to be right again. It's now moved to the right 2.4 meters. All right. Sound good? That's how I think about this guy. This is the form I like to... Uh, think of waves. There's a whole bunch of different wave equations in life. They're all pretty much valid. Um, this one is the most intuitive to me, so I try and change everything to this form if I can. Uh, I think a little bit later we'll do like the whole kx omega t form, which is fine. Uh, it just intuitively doesn't make sense to me, so I try and bring it all back to a uh, to this form because it, it feels... It's my happy place. Alright? See you on problem three.